Chuck, don't you dare touch this fence. My husband just painted it. Big deal. Pardon me. Are you the janitor's wife? No. I'm the landlord's wife. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Scott. I had no idea. My name is Roberta Stevens. Jim just called me about the apartment. Oh, well, there must be some mistake. My husband's renting it to somebody he knew in the army. Well, that's me. I was a whack. Jim and I were stationed in Paris together. Just a minute. So you were saving that apartment for an old war buddy, huh? Oh, is Bobby here? Why didn't you tell me it was a girl? I tried to, but you wouldn't give me a chance. You didn't try very hard. Oh, now, look, Bobby... Uh, Roberta did an awful lot for me, and this is the least I can do to repair. For what? Well, if it weren't for her, I might still be overseas. She got the colonel to dig up a replacement for me and pull strings, so I got on a plane instead of a transport. Well, couldn't we show our gratitude from a distance? Well, you wouldn't discriminate against a veteran just because of sex, would you? Remember the night I drove you to the airport? Uh-huh. Well, on the way back to Paris, I hit a hay wagon. You never saw such a mess. Took me days to get the straw out of my hair. None of the girls would believe me when I told them how it happened. Lady, how soon can I meet her? Well, if you want to come over some afternoon and help me clean up the yard, why... Pardon me. Oh, hello, Mrs. Scott. I brought you the rent. Thank you. Seems strange giving money to a man you know. I'll bet it does. In case you didn't catch my name, I'm Ed Forbes. Oh, yes. I've heard a lot about you from Jim. You're a lawyer, aren't you? I uh, practice before the bar, also behind it. Can I offer you some wine of the country? I'd love it. If there's one thing I have a weakness for, it's champagne. If there's one thing I have a weakness for, it's girls who have a weakness. <laughs> what are you celebrating? Our wedding anniversary. Really? Mm hmm You know, all the time we were overseas, Jim talked of nothing but you. That must have been pretty dull. Oh, no. Jim can make anything interesting. I'm sure Miss Stevens is just the person to refresh her memory about Paris. Oh, yeah. Say, Bobby, uh, Roberta, do you remember the name of that cafe just down the street from the uh, Dear Mago? Not offhand, but I could look it up in my diary. Could I peer over your shoulder? It's been so long since I've read a good book. Tell me, Miss Stevens, what did you do before the war? The same thing I'm doing now, modeling. Oh, then you're not a professional soldier. Your wife has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Your humorous wife needs another drink. It's always been my ambition to get hold of a surplus whack. <laughs> By the way, I'm having some people in for a housewarming tomorrow night. I'd like you all to come. Sure thing. Have you forgotten, dear, we're going out to dinner tomorrow night? I'm available. Well, I think I'd better be going. I've uh, hardly unpacked yet. Do you mind if I come along and help? Three hands are better than two. <laughs> Thanks for the drink. He's walking right into a trap. Yeah, but look at the babe. Oh, it's lovely out here. Just lovely. You've always wanted to own a piece of land. There must have been a hot time here the night Coolidge was elected. <laughs> Jim, your friend Charlie is back from his business trip. Do you think we ought to notify the FBI? What for? Mr. Gray said to forget it. Who's Charlie? He's one of our tenants, and Connie is convinced he's a master criminal, or at least a polygamist. Well, Ed, you're a lawyer. Let me put the evidence to you. Suppose somebody moved into the house, and a what few days later... This place? I'm Mr. Scott. The Department of Housing and Building. I'd like to inspect the premises. Yeah, sure, right through here. Why don't you slip into something comfortable and join us? Well, I wouldn't want to give the boys too much inspiration. Excuse me. What do you say we have dinner together? Wonderful. Where? Oh, some place where we don't have to dress, like your apartment.
mean no. I was, uh, I was just, my hammock broke down. Roberta's apartment was empty. She was away over the weekend on a modeling job. Never mind job. about that now. Look at this. So what? That's the same woman we saw Charlie having dinner with. How can you tell? She's only got half a face. And the description of the man who swindled her sounds exactly like Charlie. Well, you're jumping at conclusions. You're jumping at me. Listen. Mrs. Fraser met the dignified old gentleman at a swank hotel where he was registered as Peter Chadwick. After a whirlwind courtship during which he showered her with gifts, Mr. Chadwick proposed marriage. He also offered to invest part of her capital in his alleged enterprises. The attractive widow turned over $12,000 to her fiancé, and that was the last she saw of him. After waiting a week, she notified the police. Well, that's the big business deal that Charlie pulled off. There's probably some very simple explanation for the whole thing. Let's go downstairs. And how do you explain this? From the man's method of operation, the police have concluded that he is the notorious Charlie Price, who is wanted on similar charges in at least seven states. Over the past 15 years, he has defrauded scores of gullible women of a reputed half million dollars. Poor Edie. Confidence men don't go around marrying penniless widows and lending money to strangers. All right, we'll give him a chance to prove himself. Yeah, let's do it right now. Oh, I wondered where you disappeared to. I know what you're thinking, but you could be wrong, too. I don't care where you spent last night or any other night. But Roberta just got back. I was still asleep, and I didn't know. I'm it. only talking to you because this is an emergency. But that doesn't mean I'm speaking to you.